So why why did I come out with a mask like that on? Or did I want a dramatic entrance? Did I want to feel what it's like to run my fingers through some hair? I actually wanted to uh, talk to you about potential and unmasking your potential. That's what I wanted to talk to you about through a very special program I call 007. O for organisation, O for optimism, and seven very, very important key daily actions. Who's earned their breakfast this morning? Yes. Very good, very good. Who thought about it but decided oh, I'll sleep in? <laughs> Who said, bugger that, I'm staying in bed as long as I can? Yeah, okay, awesome. I just thought while we had Bond happening, you might just have a look and give me a shout out if this is your favourite Bond. Mm, not too much? Yes. What about the original and the best? He's the one. He said, I am the last one. That's what he said. So let's find out how organised you are. If you think you're a 10 out of 10 score for being organised, in a minute, I'm going to get you to stand up, put your hands together over your head, and just yell out, I am the time guru. <laughs> if you're a 1 or a 2, I'm going to get you to squat down, just low in your chair. If you're a 3, you can sort of stay with your hands on your knees. If you're a 4 or 5, you can stay seated. If you're a six, you can stand up. If you're a seven, you stand up with one hand in the air. If you're an eight, with two hands in the air. If you're a nine, your hands together. And if you're a ten, it's your hands together. And I am the time guru. So one and two crouch down low, three a little bit higher, four a bit higher, five stay in your seat, six stand up, seven, eight, nine, and I'm the time guru. Now here's, here's the reference. If you are totally organised, like Heidi is, and you get through all of your things every day and nothing important ever falls by the wayside and you always fulfil your commitments and you're always on time and you're always ready to go and you're always ticking things off your list, you're a 10. If you're not bad and you're organised most of the time but sometimes things get ahead of you, you know, you're a 5 or somewhere in between. And if you say, Mark, I'm just happy to wake up breathing and anything about that is a bonus, you're a one. Righto, so one and two, you crouch down. Three a bit higher, four a little bit higher. Five, you sit. Six, you stand up. Seven, one hand in the air. Eight, another hand in the air. Nine together. And ten, I'm the time guru. I'm the time guru. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know, Kel. I'm sure. There's people down the hole there. Okay, have a seat, please. Well done, ladies. Well done. Now let me, let me check this out. Now I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And like Hang the Butcher, for every question you have to say, oh, well, yeah, guilty, you have to go one more move. So the first time you have to say, well, you got me, you stand up. The second one, if you've already stood up, you put one hand out. But if, you've, if you're the first one, you're okay, you can sit down. So the first time you get a wrong answer, you stand up. The second one, you put your arm out. The third one, you put your other arm out. And the fourth one, you just start flapping. Because <laughs> that's what you do. You're just flapping around, flapping around. So the first question is, in the last month, have you bought petrol during the high point of the price cycle? So, you know, I sort of had half a tank when it was lower and I thought about it, but I didn't get around to it. And before you know it, you're low on petrol, so you fill up at the high point in the cycle. Yeah, we have to be honest. Thanks, Nikki. Excellent. Excellent. Now, if you're still sitting down and you get the next one wrong, you stand up. If you're already standing up, you put one arm out. Have you been late to an appointment, to a meeting, to a presentation, to a party in the past month? Yeah. All those that I saw walking along the corridor at five past nine, make sure you're up and your hands are there. If you don't have a to-do list, then it's the next one. If you, if you have a to-do list but you can't find it, that's your next one. Or if you have a to-do list but there's been something on your to-do list for more than three days and it's still there, you're the next one. Okay. Right. Anyone who's had to stop 
on the way to a presentation to a party to check the directions, because you thought you knew where it was, but you didn't quite, you stand up. Excellent. If you have paid interest on a credit card in the last year, please stand up. If you have had to call somebody back because you weren't quite sure what was going on and you had to check something out, or someone's had to call you back because they weren't quite clear on what it was they were supposed to do, that's your next one. And the final one is you, if you have lost, and when I mean lost, you've mislaid it for more than five seconds, you've mislaid your purse, your jewellery, your keys, or your children. Flap around, flap around, because that's what you're doing, you're just flapping around, you're just flapping around. Righto, I want you to pay the price, anyone who's got their wings out, for the next 20 seconds I want you to move around and just say to the people, oh, I'm flapping around, so I'm flapping around, I'm flapping around. Because that's all you're doing. You're just flapping around, flapping around, flapping around. Right, have a seat. Thanks, ladies. Well done. Thanks. Thanks for being good sports. Thanks for being good sports. But the message is there. You know, we hear a lot about being organised, and people think, oh, you know, I can be organised. In my experience, most people rate themselves, if there was an organisation scale, they'd rate themselves about four points out of ten higher than they actually are. <laughs> now, I think I've apologised before about getting a bit excited on stage and I tend to spray it out there a little bit, so I'll try to stay back. But if you don't get it from the water pistol, you'll get it first hand. Now, so the first O in 007 is to be organised. That's the first O. The second O is optimism. And then the seven is there's seven really very important key actions that I want you to embrace. I'm going to challenge you to embrace. That's what it's about. So we've had a look at organisation and as a group the technical term is you suck <laughs> at organisation. There's a few people who are sitting down but the vast majority of people were flapping around and you've got the hardest job of all in regard to being organised because you run a home business. You run a home business and you're a woman and many of you, a lot of you are going to have families. That's, that's it. That's as hard as it gets. Because when you are in a corporate environment, there are, there are disciplines imposed on you through that corporate environment that you don't have at home. So you have, to, you have to embark on those disciplines yourself. Plus you've got the kids running around at different times and when the kids are little, they're not going to listen to your schedule or your day planner. So that's got to be incorporated into that. And that brings us to optimism, and optimism is extremely important and sometimes it's done in the wrong way. So let's have a look at optimism. Optimism is the belief that in the end it's going to work out. That's what optimism is. It's going to, it's going to be fine, it's going to work out. But sometimes people take it too far. So I'd be optimistic if I thought my forward program is going to fill up as long as I call my past hostesses, my referral alliances, the people I know. I'm going to make catalogue sales if I, if I call past customers. But I'm over-optimistic if I'm just, you know, it's going, to, it's going to fill up but I don't have to do anything about it. You know, you're overly optimistic if you watch the Geelong Cats get beaten by the Collingwood Magpies and then you watch the replay the next day hoping for a different result. That's when you're too optimistic. You're too optimistic if you think your teenage children are going to keep their rooms tidy. You're too optimistic if your idea of healthy eating is six chicken nuggets, some fries, a McFlurry and a Diet Coke. That's when you're too optimistic. And some people are way too optimistic. And I wanted to tell you a, a, very, a true story and quite a moving story of a, a fellow called Jim Stockdale. Now Jim Stockdale was an admiral in, uh, admiral in the US Navy. He was a pilot, but an admiral. So it seems a bit weird, but you can be a pilot and work for the Navy and be an admiral. He was. And he had 26 combat decorations, this guy. You know, the original war hero, squeaky clean. And he got shot down in 1965 during the Vietnam War. And he spent the next eight years at what they called the Hanoi Hilton, which is a prisoner of war camp. And he endured horrible deprivations and, and thousands of people died and it was just 
probably one of the worst experiences a human could go through. And Australians know a lot more about Changi and that, the prisons from, from those wars, but are very similar to that sort of deprivation. And he survived. Came out really skinny and with a lot of medical ailments, but he survived. And when they asked him, Jim, tell us who it was that didn't make it out. You know what he said? That's easy. It was the optimists. Because the optimists would say, oh, we'll be out by Christmas. They'll come and get us. It's going to be over by Christmas. And Christmas would come. Guess what? They weren't out. So the optimists would say, we'll be out by Thanksgiving, Americans. We'll be out by Thanksgiving. We've got to be out by Thanksgiving. And I'm going to keep thinking positive, and we'll be out by Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving came, and they weren't out. And this, went, this happened year after year, and he said they just died of a broken heart. In the end, this got too much for them, and they just died. So he says to make a really important distinction.